MIT researchers just won an award for their design of a new toroidal propeller concept that promises to make drones less annoying in flight. Less drony? Despite the buzz surrounding this supposed game-changing technology, no data or designs have been released to validate its claims. In this video, we aim to cover the truth behind these designs through rigorous testing and analysis of 3D printed toroidal propellers in both PETG and PLA materials. Join us as we explore if this lives up to the buzz of being a genuine advancement in drone propulsion technology, or simply a captivating experiment. Recursion Labs. For science. Community member Striking FPV has taken a look at the MIT designs and has copied and published his own designs based on the biohazard looking three blade equivalent they showed, asking for the community to test them. And how could I say no to that? I 3D printed a 3.5 inch or 90 millimeter propeller using PETG material, following in the footsteps of the MIT team who used 3D printing for their own tests. While 3D printing may not always result in the most robust propellers, it does provide a platform to assess the performance of these new designs. This test will be conducted using my automated variable controlled motor testing methodology, testing at a regulated 16 volts to emulate a 4S battery. We will first conduct this test on a T-Motor F1404 3800KV motor, which has tested great for high performance 3.5 inch FPV drones, and will be paired with a performance and efficiency leading HQ prop 3 blade 2.5 inch pitch propeller to compare with the toroidal propeller. Let's jump into the results, starting with thrust. As you can see, the toroidal propeller in orange performed extremely poorly on this motor, only pulling a maximum of 150 grams of thrust. While this may be sufficient for a sub 250 gram quadcopter to take off, the flight would likely be sluggish. And you can see here that the efficiency was extremely poor, requiring the same amount of watts per gram near the start as the HQ prop propeller required at the top throttle. Looking at watts of power per gram of thrust, this chart is horrifying to look at. This propeller clearly isn't viable on this motor, and I'm not even going to bother charting the spin-up time because I could hear when testing it took forever to spin up. The propeller is extremely heavy at 4.375 grams each, so this is not at all surprising. Let's give it the best chance to succeed and double the motor stator and lower the KV using the T-Motor F1408 2800 KV motor, which traditionally would be more ideal for larger propellers. Since I've seen people say that the toroidal propeller would most likely be ideal for a Cinewhoop, I've added the Gemfan 5 blade 3.5 inch propeller to this test, which is almost the same weight as the toroidal propeller. <laughs> I've limited the testing to 80% since the toroidal propellers start flexing a bit after this point. Looking at thrust the toroidal propeller on the larger motor in yellow shows an improvement after 40% over the smaller motor in orange, but the difference isn't significant compared to the other propellers. However, the efficiency chart does show an improvement for the larger motor over the smaller one, but it's still far less efficient than a traditional propeller. Looking again at grams of thrust generated per watt of power, you can clearly see there is an improvement here, but the performance and efficiency is still fairly terrible. I was originally going to conclude testing here, but when I was compiling the data, Striking FPV released an updated design where the propeller has a larger surface area, so I threw it on the printer to see how it compared. I weighed in the propeller at 4.9 grams, which is a little more than 0.5 grams heavier than the previous design, and then threw it on to test. It must be noted that this design is not exactly a whisper quiet option. While it may eliminate the high-pitched squeal that was mentioned by MIT, it unfortunately increases the overall noise generated when producing thrust. Looking at the updated thrust chart, in green you can see the new version, which somehow manages to produce slightly less low-end thrust than the first, which is likely due to the lower pitch of the propeller. If we quickly switch to efficiency, we can see where it does have a significant improvement over the first, where, at least after 25% throttle, it maintains a much higher efficiency throughout the throttle range. This efficiency does give a noticeable improvement to the grams of thrust to watts of power chart, but when you compare it to the lighter 5-blade propeller, I can't fathom why you'd actually want to use this on a build. If we look at the time it takes for a propeller to spin up from idle to 65% throttle, you can see the first version of the propeller is extremely sluggish to spin up, where version 2 shows a significant improvement, while still being noticeably less responsive than the 5-blade gem fan. If we look at the response correlated to thrust instead of RPM, the difference in the response from the 5-blade propeller is much more pronounced given the amount of thrust it generates at 65% RPM. I chose PETG for this test since it would bend instead of break when under stress, as I didn't want it exploding in my lab. I was curious if a more rigid propeller would give better results, so against my good judgment, I printed both propellers in PLA and ran them through the automated testing to 80% throttle. The second version of the propeller made it, but unfortunately, 
unfortunately, the first version exploded at 69% of static thrust, spraying tiny bits of plastic shards all over my lap. We have good data up to this point, so we can limit the test to 68.5 for this propeller, and the rest at 80% of thrust. So, looks like there's an improvement with PLA. You can see the explosive version 1 toroidal propeller in blue, and the V2 propeller in orange, starting to bridge the gap, but still underperforming. Looking at efficiency, you can see that both propellers in PLA have slightly more efficiency over their PETG counterparts, which is probably due to the additional thrust being generated. Finally, we can look at the grams of thrust generated to watts of power. Here we can see the propellers in PLA produce more thrust for the same power, and more top end thrust, at least for the one that doesn't explode. It is an improvement, but still significantly underperforming in both thrust and efficiency compared to the traditional propellers. Comparing the spin up time from idle to 65% throttle, the PLA propellers both perform better, especially the V1 propeller highlighted here in pink. With that said, the response time shown is still really bad, and if you correlate the RPM to the generated thrust, you can see that it still takes a very long time to reach the target thrust, which isn't a lot of thrust. It is important to keep in mind that this is a 3D printed version compared to production propellers, and not the design developed by MIT, as they have not formally released any designs. Apart from the claimed reduction in high-pitched noise, it is unclear what other benefits this design may have over traditional propellers, but there may be a ton of downsides, as demonstrated. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. If other designs are available, please let me know in the comments so I can download and test them. If you enjoy this type of testing and are interested in propulsion system testing and analysis for sub-250 gram builds, you can find more published on this channel with more to come.